All right, y'all, so today we're gonna be doing a homemade hamburger helper bake. That's right, homemade hamburger helper. Um, I'm just gonna use these 86% uh, lean ground beef patties that I got from Food Lion. I had them in the freezer, and so I just thawed them out and used them instead of a pack of ground beef. You can do what you like. This is what I did. So I'm just gonna put a little oil in the pan, just give my burger a little bit of help. It is 80%, 86%, so it does have a little fat in it. Your oil is hot once it runs freely across the pan like this. That's a good indicator. All right, so I just put those patties down in there and begin to break them up. You know, wanna get them pretty broken up. I don't really like large chunks and things like spaghetti and pasta bakes and stuff like that. So once you get them broken up like this, um, you can just go ahead with a little bit of seasoning. I added a little bit of slap yo mama in there, a little bit of Lowry's in there, and a little bit of Badia Ranch seasoning. This seasoning does not have any MSG for all of you out there looking for a more natural product than Hidden Valley. And, uh, Badia is pretty good. All right, guys, so I'm just gonna let this simmer like this until all the water has evaporated from the beef because I'm gonna use the same grease in there, but I don't want it watery. So once the water has pretty much evaporated and the beef is more brown, um, you can tell like right here when I move the beef around there's nothing but straight oil on the top, bottom straight grease and so I took the grease out of the pan with a slotted spoon and then I just not the grease but the meat I took the meat out with a slotted spoon and then added in the diced onions so that I don't have to add any extra oil right now and um, I just begin to brown those up you're gonna see me take my spatula and just move that around you want to get all that pretty evenly coated to the translucent and then toward the end of that process i added my minced garlic i used a uh, squeezed minced garlic you can use that any garlic in a jar you can freshly cut your garlic up mince it it doesn't matter just add it at the end of the onions because you don't want it to burn then you just want to go ahead and incorporate that in with the onions you know so that everything is everything you know what i'm saying get all that mixed in and then once you have that incorporated and your garlic is pretty much browned up and you're ready to lend flavor just add a little bit of extra oil to the pan and then go in with a little bit of flour I used about a tablespoon and a half of flour you know because I'm gonna make a little light roux and I just began to uh, whisk the whole key to this thing is to keep whisking do not stop whisking do not stop the movement because if you do you risk having a broken sauce you don't want no broke sauce you just don't want it all right guys so i sped this part up um just adding the uh beef broth to it and um the reason i sped it up because i'm showing you the whole process just going to keep adding broth little by little you don't want to stop whisking because you want to you will end up with a broken sauce and it's not gonna it's gonna look bad it's not gonna taste good or you're gonna have to throw out your onions and start over so you don't want to do that so just keep moving add a little bit at a time and keep whisking keep whisking keep whisking so that's pretty much what i'm doing here guys nothing special this is all stuff i've done before all things you've probably seen before and um it's really not that hard pretty easy so yeah just keep on moving and then once you're done, you're gonna add an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. I use no salt added tomato sauce. And I also added a can of diced tomatoes, fire roasted diced tomatoes, Um, my favorite. You don't have to add diced tomatoes if you don't want. It's just something that I really, really like. All right, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this a whisk, get it incorporated. And then I'm gonna go in and start seasoning my salsa. I use this um, McCormick Perfect Pinch Garlic and Herb. I really love it. It's really good. I used a lot of it. it doesn't have any salt, so you can kind of get heavy handed with it to give it um, more flavor. And then I use my mustache onions and herb, onion and herb seasoning. I love this for real. I love this more than, whew, I love this seasoning. It's so good. And then I add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Don't have to get heavy handed with this at all. I just added a dash because I didn't want it to be too spicy and a little bit of cayenne goes a long way. So just a little bit. And then I added a little bit more seasoning salt in there just so, you know, the flavor was not bland and it wakes up all those seasonings. So just going ahead and stir this a little bit more. And this is what the sauce looks like once that's incorporated. See the little garlic and everything in there. 
From here, I just add my dried pasta to it. Um, I'm using rigid ziti. So it's just, just bigger ziti, you know, with rigid noodles. And so I get those kind of mixed in there. And um, you can see that the sauce is coming to more of a, a boil. I'll go ahead and cover it and reduce the heat. Also, guys, whenever you put your onions in the pan to saute them, make sure you reduce the heat there first. I know I didn't say it, but just remember. All right, so this is how it cooked. And then, so boom. I did not take the noodles all the way. I got them most of the way done because this isn't going in the oven. Once I um, take off the pan, I'm going to get ready to add my heavy cream in there. Guys, you do not have to add heavy cream if you don't like it. If you just are lactose intolerant or maybe you're just trying to cut the fat, you don't have to add heavy cream at all or cheese, which is the next ingredient that's going in here. But this is just to add to the richness of the, um, the pasta. People who like creamy, cheesy pastas, this is this is for you. And so I added the heavy cream, added the cheese. I'm just gonna go ahead and give all of that a big old stir. I'm mixing and I'm fixing, getting that all around, incorporated so everything gets melty like so. And then I'm gonna come at you with some cream cheese. This is some cream cheese that I softened to the point to where I could just cut the tip of the pack off and squeeze it out because everybody knows that squeezing cold cream cheese or trying to mix cold cream cheese is, is almost impossible. And it, this, this just works better. Um, yeah, doing it this way. Also another optional thing, you don't have to add cream cheese. Only reason I added it is because I just had to be a little extra. This is a mukbang. This is a mukbang. So, you know, just a little extra for y'all. And um, add a little bit of hamburger back to the um, pan. All the hamburger that I browned earlier. Boom. Got that mixed up nice and well. And then, yeah. So, we could just eat that out of the pan if we wanted to. It's done. But we're not going to do that. We're going to put a lid on it. Sit it to the side. Turn off the burner. And then we're going to go to the next step. All right, y'all, so I got three boxes of Jiffy. I know everybody doesn't like Jiffy, but I do. So I put the Jiffy in a bowl, added one egg per box of the bowl, and then I added honey, which I always either had honey or brown sugar to Jiffy. I kind of make it how I want to, and um, this is a regular occurrence. I usually add melted butter, but here I didn't do that because I didn't want to add too many wet ingredients to this, this particular Jiffy recipe. Here, I just eyeball the amount of milk I put in here. I do not like to uh, measure out my milk because I don't follow the recipe anyway. So I just kind of like know how much to put based off of the consistency. So here, I just um, took an old country uh, handheld mixer and began mixing it up. The way I like to do this is when it has large lumps, I usually like to hold the mixer at a medium or low setting in one spot and then move it to another spot and let it work like that. Toward the end, I just let it speed, I turn the speed up and finish it off um, no more than 10 seconds on high speed. And then I just like to let it sit like so because this gives you a more of a fluffy texture of cornbread when you let it sit, it kind of rises better. And so I just have a glass pan here. I did dry the inside. You see water droplets on the outside. And um, I just sprayed it with some canola oil. I'm just gonna start to add my pasta that we set aside to the bottom of the pan. Um, you could add it all in there, but I'm gonna do it a little different. Um, I'm gonna layer it, so to speak. And the only reason I did this is because I'm being extra again. So that's the first layer. And then I'm gonna take the remainder of my cheese and just go ahead and go ahead and throw it in there. Why not? It's a mukbang. It's a mukbang. So I got the cheese on there, and then I'm gonna add the rest of my pasta on top. And then, y'all know what's next. If you didn't, now you do. Some of that thick, jiffy mix mixture over there. Oh, uh huh? And I'm gonna start just laying that in there. Give it a little bit of push around. You need a big pan for this, by the way. Don't get no little pan. If you make it as much as I did, you are gonna need a big pan. For sure, for sure. All right, so I just lay it in there like that until it's all in the bowl or all in the pan and all evenly distributed. And then I, um, and then boom, that's pretty much that on that. I set my oven to 375. The Jiffy thing tells you to set it to a higher temperature, but 
you definitely don't want to over bake the top of this so this is the finished product guys came out excellent couldn't be happier just bake until you know yeah toothpick comes out clean hope you guys enjoy this Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm AJ. This is Daniel. We are hashtag. 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 Hashtag, hashtag the Canon. CCTV. Hey guys, welcome back to our eating show. Yeah. All right guys, today we're back with another mukbang, of course. And today guys, we'll be having a special little, I don't even know what to call it, baby. Let me see. It's like hamburger health, but it's not, I don't want to call it a casserole. Listen. You just look at the title. <laughs> I'll be there figuring it out by then. But yeah, it's kind of like a hamburger helper and I baked uh, like a cornbread on top. I gave y'all the recipe at the beginning. So if you watch that, you know what's going on. You know where it's at. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get in this thing. But first, before we do, then it's going to hit you with just a couple things. If this is your first time on our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And after, hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time we upload. And give this video a thumbs up, like it. That's right, guys. Hit that button and hit, hit that, that bisniel. We become a part of our family. Guys, remember, hashtag grow, baby, grow. Hashtag the cannabis moving closer to our goal of 25K. So far, guys, we've gained another 300 subscribers. So thank you so much. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome to the family. If you've been here before, you already know what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and pray so that we can dive in this food. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless this food, Lord. Let it be nourished to our bodies. Provide for those who are less fortunate, Lord. All these things we ask in your son, Jesus, name Christ. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So, I to just get right in there. You see some right edges. It's a little crispy. Edges. It's a little crisp. So I'm gonna show y'all. Hopefully, it ain't too hot. I'm gonna show y'all the top because it's like uh, it's just want y'all see them nice little cracks. Woo. So hopefully, this came out how I wanted. This is my first time doing this, and I kind of like just conceptualize that it would work. And yeah, so. Uh-uh, tap, tap. <laughs> oh, God. It smells do good. <laughs> Did it do it? <laughs> it smells good. Let me see, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna just scoop this out like this. All right, y'all. Ooh. I'm gonna try to get it focused in the camera without dropping too much of it. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some of this on our plate and then we'll come right. All right, y'all. We back. Time to eat. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Y'all, who's gonna drink a salad with? We're gonna eat us out. But we just had one, so. Mm. It's good. We hopped it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little dance. <laughs> that cornbread. Came together the way you thought. It did. I was worried about the cornbread setting up the way I wanted, but it, it did. Mm -hmm. I'm telling y'all, so best bet is to do this because if, if you, because there's so much moisture underneath the cornbread, you can't turn the oven up to where they want you to bake the cornbread at because the top might get done too quick and then the bottom will be underdone. And so you gotta bake it at like two, 350 to 375 for a long time so that it doesn't brown too quick. But, and it's still rising in the middle. It's all right if it's a little underneath, underneath but you don't want this straight, you know, cornmeal. Mm -hmm. 
I really didn't know what to expect with this. Well, I think it came out great. With something I wanted to try. <laughs> Well, we got Fresh today. Uh-uh. Fresh cut in the house. Fresh cut in the house. Fresh cut in the house. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Y'all want a little bit of... Here we go. I have some more ash. Let me see. Let me see what I can do. You got all that fresco on the food. <laughs> it's fizzling off. <laughs> Ew. <sighs> you ain't above a burp. Yes, I am. I'm glad I use the noodles I used to. Mm -hmm. What other kind were you thinking about using? First I thought about macaroni noodles, but if I did use those, I wanted to use the ones with the, the ridges. Oh yeah. Whenever you have a lot of sauce, it's good to use noodles that have the deep ridges in them. No matter if it's rigatoni or ziti, because it holds on to the sauce better. Like y'all know, y'all be like, be trying to front on my Jiffy, boy. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something. I like Jiffy. I like Jiffy over regular cornbread. I do. <laughs> I like Jiffy over homemade cornbread, so I'm going to make it. I make it my way, but I love Jiffy Mix. The people at Jiffy are all right <laughs> with me. <laughs> I'm still cornmeal and... Flavor. Flavor. But. This ice sometimes be crisp. Who my chest? Sometimes. That's Who my, my chest? Always crispy. <laughs> it be a bug. How you burping for days? Okay. The cornbread is pissing me up. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Y'all be trying to talk about Jiffy. Look at me. Let me get a good piece. I'm trying to get a good piece to show y'all, but it keep on the point. I don't want to be shown. Look at that. Look at that. Wait a minute. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. You sound like an old person. <laughs> <laughs> Look up there. Look. You full? Cornbread. <laughs> Something good. Yeah, when I do Jiffy, I don't measure the liquid. <laughs> <laughs> like the milk I put in there, I just usually measure, I mean, I just used to put one egg per box, but <laughs> I put the milk to the consistency because I don't, I do what I want to do anyway. I'll be adding <laughs> ingredients. I always add either honey or brown sugar. I do what I and want. And butter. I add melted butter, but this time I didn't add melted butter because I wanted it not to have too many wet ingredients because I didn't know how it was going to set up. So I didn't add the melted butter this time because it was on top of the, uh, <laughs> on top of this hamburger helper like. Then I have to find a name for this. <laughs> I'm sure something will come to me before I start typing. <laughs> 
Yes, Lord. It's not too salty either, cause listen, I use low sodium beef broth. I did use Lowry and Slappy Mama, but those are only two salt ingredients I use, and it's not telling you to use no salt stuff, because hey, salt wakes up things. Is about to be in there for me, but. Whenever I'm using multiple seasonings, I think people, we got a habit of using everything that has salt in it. Like, if you're using Lowry's, ain't no need to use no salt. <laughs> or if you use Lowry's, like, use a little bit, but use the seasonings that are in Lowry's if you're going to do the, like a seasoned salt. Or you're going to use Slappy Mama or Creole seasoning or anything. You got to be mindful because all these seasoning blends might lend a different flavor, but... If you go too far and then using beef broth and stuff like that, if you go too far, you're gonna have a salty end result. So I use low sodium beef broth and I was really careful to like only use Lowry's here and Slap Your Mama here. And you know, I used the no salt Mrs. Dash, the onion and herb, the Italian onion and um, uh, garlic, the perfect pinch of garlic and herb those are really flavorful and I can get heavy handed with those and not have to worry about making it too salty but you gotta think about these dishes where you have to season here and season there you gotta think about what you're putting in there because man all that stuff combined you might not can get enough flavor in there if everything has salt because you gotta hold back if you use some stuff that ain't got no um salt in it you can go a little bit more heavy handed to get more of a, a deeper flavor you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, you just use the salt when you need it. If at the end of the dish, it's not you don't have enough salt in it, you can always add a little bit to get where you need to go. But I'd rather play it safe and then add later. I keep looking at it. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Let me see. I'm about to stop. Too much for my whole ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sauce is so good in the noodles too with the beef mm -hmm. and them little onions <laughs> them little onions boy <laughs> see I use a whole bunch of like onions but onions are I like a a tricky dish because the kid can eat this and not even notice the onions mm-hmm and, um, but they lend a lot of flavor like later on like growing up if I saw something had an onion in it that was it for me nope like these onions are <laughs> are um I cooked them down for one but then being in there as everything else cooked like get so soft that you wouldn't even notice them mm -hmm. they're not crunchy like them little onions be on that cheeseburger at McDonald's <laughs> oh my god why would you put it on a kid burger? I know some folks like raw onions, but I just ain't got that yet. Which I know there's some kid out here probably tearing that little burger up with them onions. That was never my story. Now the flavor of onions in general, I've gotten more accustomed to. Where I was like, I can eat red onions now, but I can't. Uh, white onions are too aggressive. I can't do them. <laughs> Not raw, I can't do them yet. Maybe, you know. One day you'll get there. I ain't trying to get there. <laughs> I told you my aunt used to, before Bible study, she get her a sub and get her some raw onions up there. Brother be stinking in church. I'm like, girl, like why I, are you doing that? If this? I have too many raw, like, if I got too many raw onions on my burger and I take them off, I'd be mad because they, I still taste them. Like, that flavor is just not. Oh, see, I'm okay with that. I ain't. I am. I'm okay if it, you know, if no, the flavor the is still is, there. The problem is, I'm not the fan of raw onions yet um, like i really just ain't i, I like a love of cooked onion like if you give me like onions and potatoes like y'all know like slice some potatoes and like make them like scallop like and cook them in a pan with a little bit of oil salt and pepper and some uh onions that's all you need it's simple like you ain't gotta do all the extra seasoning but i gotta have them cooked i think it's delicious it needs it the smell of them cooking and everything but being raw 
I just ain't got there yet. I you just get there. I don't want to. I mean, I'm okay. I ain't gonna say I don't want to. I'm okay with not being. Uh, able, you never get there because it's just the bite ain't for me. I'd rather have some spice than a bite from an onion. Like, I don't. <laughs> All right, AJ, you got your phone on you. Nope. Why are you looking like that? I sent you a personality quiz earlier. And we gonna take it together up here because us doing it with me doing it is gonna take forever. Yes, that uh, one. A Disney one? Yes. <laughs> Everybody, hold on, y'all. Oh, still, you got <laughs> to keep my cornbread. You gonna eat your cornbread. You want some more? I got more over here. <laughs> I don't think I'm about it. Oh, <laughs> I got more. You gonna look over at it. <laughs> Is it talking to you? You can probably put it back up there so they have something to look at. Okay. <laughs> Instead of that dirt plate. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> I know you'd be tempted to <laughs> do that. I ain't doing it. You gonna pull some out? Girls, you, you want some more or not? No, I'm all right. Come on. All right, personality quiz. All right. If a person approaches you with a problem, what would you do? <laughs> Give them advice, guide them in the best way to get ahead. Tell them this is life, learn from it in the best way. Everything happens for a reason. I would direct and tell them where they are wrong. I would tell them what I do. I'd be honest saying exactly what I think about the situation. Probably the last one for me. I am two of these. I'm a couple of them, but the last one sums up everything. The last one is a, a good sum of everything. I'd be honest and tell them what I think. Like, um, I think that, because give them advice, I probably would do that. Guide them in the best way to get ahead. It depends. Like, I'm not going to tell you nothing wrong just to get you. All right. But this is the best way. Yeah, I'd probably tell them a couple of them. So I'll just say that the last one is probably more of a sum. It works out. I want to pick more than one, and it won't let me. Right, quick. I'm trying uh -huh. to have your cake and eat it too. Pick one. All right, I put. I would tell them what I did. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. If you don't get something you want the first time, what do you do about it? <laughs> Keep trying until I get it. I would see the bright side and learn from it. I would seek help to improve. Nothing. It'll help me grow. I would just try again, but with double effort. <clears throat> try something else to get my mind off of it. Probably the first one. Because I probably might let, I'll be like, I'm going to let it go for right now. But I'll be back. Like a cigarette. Uh -uh. Like, um, <laughs> like a, like, uh, Macy Gray on, um. Stop. Like Macy Gray on training day. I want to see that warrant. What? I want to see that goddamn warrant. I want to see that warrant. That's me. I'm going to keep trying. You might have won for now, but I'll be back. Um, I thought when you said coming back for the cigarette, it's like when people put it on the post outside the store and then... For what? <laughs> you know, some people, they be walking in the store and they ain't done with their cigarettes. So no, they I, wasn't, it, oh. I wasn't talking about to eat. They put it on the post outside and they come back. <laughs> All right, I would probably put it. You just suck. You indecisive of everything. Pick one. I'm just thinking beyond. Well, don't think beyond. I probably would see the bright side and learn from it. <laughs> uh -huh. If someone close to you went through a breakup, what would you do or say? Do not get carried away by the situation because it's only a negative moment. See the positive side. I would approach them and explain that I am there for them. Come, let's go out, do not stay home. Here I am for you. I would see the strategies to solve the problem and advise them how I see best. I would tell them the truth. Being very direct and honest, I would help them through the situation even if it meant sitting in silence. I'm probably the come, let's go out, <laughs> not stay here alone. <laughs> let's go somewhere. Get your mind off of it. What about you? Probably the last one. I'll be like, you know, like, <clears throat> I would uh, help them get through it, even if I'm sitting in silence. I'll be like, like, look, you know what I'm saying? It's all good. Like, if it's one of my homeboys, bro, we come over, you know what I'm saying? Like, I play the game a little bit, we watch the TV, whatever you need, bro. 
Just I know I know you probably won't be by yourself right now, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or you know, you know, she I ain't gonna say she, but yeah, hey, we can we can, you know, we we go out, do something real quick, you know. Whatever it takes, you know, just what? to help them out. Um, the next one is, I'm the type of person who is spontaneous, creative, and generally looks on the bright side of things, is a friendly person, is scrappy, and always willing to help, is an enthusiastic, enterprising, and versatile, is a firm and committed worker with a deep sense of responsibility towards others, is a very talented and demanding person, is an imaginative, creative, kind, and generous person. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I would pick is not up here because I <laughs> let's see it's like I want to take pieces from each one right I know <laughs> because I'm really not I think it's either the first one I think I'm going to go with the first one or the third one what's the third one this the, one uh, enterprising. enthusiastic enterprising and versatile but I think I'm going to go with the first one spontaneous creative and generally I try to be positive you know, life tells you a bunch of negatives, but you know, you just gotta be like, you know, say la vie. Mm. I guess I go with friendly, extravagant, always willing to help. Probably more of the, the two than the first, but anyway. Um, when in social situations, <clears throat> which word best describes you? Reserved, sarcastic, enthusiastic, gentle, outgoing, curious. I say uh, enthusiastic, probably. What you think? What about you? Yeah. Yeah. Or outgoing. Probably more of the enthusiastic than the outgoing. Um, I'm between reserved and curious because I sit back and I look. Yeah. Uh, curious. <laughs> you want me to go and curious? You probably be reserved, of course, but it's not yeah. like you just like to myself. Oh, right. No. I think I'm more. You might be quiet, but you like this. <laughs> like my grandma. Uh, uh stop it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did you get? The protector. Oh. Protector, like the character of Tarzan, oh. are mainstream and fundamental people. They are firm, committed workers with a deep sense of responsibility toward others. They focus on fulfilling their duties, especially when they are serving the needs of other people. Mostly, they need to <coughs> need others to know that they can be trusted. Like Tarzan, they are conscientious, conscientious. Excuse me, I don't know what I was about to say, and methodical and persist until the job is done with the main motivation to provide for others and protect them. Words to describe this personality type are human, considerate, gentle, responsible, and pragmatic. I think that fits you. What do you think? I think it's pretty accurate. I feel like when I, when, you know, I might not be like in the deepest friendships with some people, but if I'm here for you, I'm here for you. And I feel like if you if you know that, if it's been put out there, then I feel the kind of like the need to, if you call me to like, you know, help you or whatever that's, I feel like I can't just blow people off. And then, you know, <clears throat> I do like to have fun and just, you know, to be friendly towards other folk. Sometimes I like my alone, my space. But for the most part, you know, if I rock with you, I rock with you. I got the extravagant. <laughs> Extravagant personality types are more like the character Dory, not Dory. Why <laughs> <laughs> Dory? It they're would friendly. be Dory. <laughs> they're friendly and happy despite some possible difficulties that might be currently on their plate. It seems that no matter what life throws their way, they always stay true and enduring. Just Words swimming. to describe this personality. Lord, my fin be off. Friendly, <laughs> quirky, helpful, different, upbeat, and innocent. I think I'm that's innocent. I don't know about the answer. Hey. The answer is probably a little much, but I think everything else is pretty, you know, pretty yeah. accurate. I can actually just even see the silliness of Dory, like, at bits. Mm -hmm. I'm very quirky <coughs> and different. Oh, well, I guess that wasn't a. Sometimes you be taking their personality tests and they be telling me things that I am not. Uh -huh. Be like, no, no, because I think when we took that, it's some test. When I first did my job, some kind of personality test we took, and I was like, I am none of these things. <laughs> I must have lied. Lies. I did. <laughs> I, had to, <laughs> I had to have lied. And anything that's like long, like anything over 20 questions, reasons why I did this one, because it was short. 
Anything over, um... I know Keep you ain't stealing my juice. You good. Oh my God. You ain't even gonna drink it. <laughs> I'm, gonna so, sit on I'm the so table. I'm so thirsty. It was gonna I'm sit on the so table. I'm so thirsty. For, and then you gonna throw it in trash. I wasn't. I was gonna drink. I know you. You gonna take my last bit of juice. I don't got no more. I'm gonna drink your other one. But anyway, anything over 20 questions, I be guessing. I just push anything. <laughs> Especially if it's not of importance. Nem. Either you gonna hire me or not with this personality. Yeah. I'm just kidding. don't take the am I a, ser a serial killer quiz. Uh, mm. Do they have one of those? I'm sure. Oh God. <laughs> that's probably a real thing. Baby, the government, you taking it? You off? That's probably a real thing. The government probably got oh, people taking God. it. Oh God. The government probably out here um, testing your personality and how likely are you to be a murderer? They probably out. It's probably a real thing. Just don't take that one. I ain't taking that. <laughs> they might have to come get me. <laughs> or shoot, you might want to just straighten up in general. Somebody been gay you a quiz. Oh yeah, it's just a little person. <laughs> you out here pushing anything and then uh, <laughs> fans be at the door. <laughs> Mister, I just didn't read it. Please. <laughs> please just, please, I ain't mean it. Ma'am, I'm gonna need you to come with me. And I cry and pee. <laughs> cry and pee. And I'll be in the background cry. like. <laughs> I would cry and pee, pee and cry. I told her not to, I told her to pay attention to him. I told you to pay attention. How you wanna make me look it up, but I don't look it up cause I don't know who watch it. Right. The I mean, <laughs> <laughs> then it might be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Then I have to then I have to start watching out. Oh never you might, it might tell you hey. yeah, it might tell you, yeah, you're likely to be one and in your mind you feel like you changing. <laughs> Every yeah, day, I'm getting I closer am. and closer. I heard mean, that quiz is right. You be at work. Maybe I am supposed you, to be out here doing this. You be at work like this. <laughs> no. Hey, don't look it up. <laughs> All right, y'all, but we about to go ahead and sli slickety slide up out this mud. Slickety slide. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come member our family, guys. Give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget it. Don't forget the thumbs up the video. It's free. Costs you nothing. Only a click. Just like the video. Guys, drop a comment down below if you'd like to interact with us in the comment section because we love, love, love to talk to y'all. Guys, last but not least, remember to share this video. Share it out with your family. Share it out with your friends because sharing is caring. So care about us. Care, care about, about us. us, guys. We love each and every one of y'all. We thank y'all for the soup bowl. Soup. The soup bowl. Soup and I don't just, I don't, I don't just, just really clear about that. Like, you know, of course, there's some financial benefits to being on YouTube and to gaining subscribers and a following and everything. But I'm telling y'all, when I go. When I cook these meals or we sit down here and we put these videos up for y'all, we put a lot of effort into it and it's not just to make a dollar. I understand that that, that's, that comes with it and no, I'm not giving this content out for free. That's It's just not happening, but at the end of the day, that's not our only motivation. I really do really try to give y'all something that you would like, not just because of an ad, but something that you would enjoy, really. Not and I and I try to be as authentic and organic as possible. Yeah, we cook recipes that somebody else might have made, and yeah, we might talk about things other people have, and yeah. But trust me, I'm not just out here just pulling ideas out just to see what'll hit. Mm -hmm. You know, what'll get me a thousand you know views over last time or whatever. That's not the main goal, really. I really do enjoy y'all as subscribers, and I appreciate the fact that you take the time to watch us, and Danielle does too. Right. From the bottom of our hearts, we really do mean that. So I just wanted to um, just let y'all know because like some people said, just need to hear things sometimes. You know, we got the best subscribers. I know everybody says that, but we really do because we everyone. Really you know, they talk to each other. I see in the comments where y'all talk to each other and I just think it's so nice. Like even if someone says that they're sick, people are saying that, you know, they're praying for them and you, you'll go right. on other people's channels sometimes and know, you know, it's a bunch of <laughs> back right. and forth nasty, but we really don't have that. And right, exactly. that I'm very grateful right. for because leave your negative to yourself. Leave no doubt. Right. Don't bring exactly. it over here. <laughs> like I'm never trying to really, like I said, give you guys anything just to put something out there just because I think that, uh, you know, um, 
however many new people might see it and love it, you know, just because of content. I want to be authentic at first, you know, at first thing, and I just want you guys to enjoy the content. Mm -hmm. Period. That's the that's the main thing. Jesus you know what I'm Christ. saying? We <laughs> we drive this ship because of y'all, and you know the financial side of it is just a perk mm. as far as I'm concerned. Because you know we definitely we wanted to do this YouTube thing. Um, we didn't want to just get in it just because of the money. Because guess what? That ain't gonna sustain mm -hmm. nobody. That's gonna that's gonna somebody gonna get drained, blown out, and it's not gonna work. But anyway, I'm gonna shut up. You got anything else? No, sir. All right, y'all. Love y'all. We holla at you, Daniel. Take us out of here. <laughs>